Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel. In this video, we'll talk about the respiratory muscles in the dog. We mean the inspiratory muscles and the expiratory muscles. So let's get started. to talk a little bit about the uh, respiratory muscles. The respiratory muscles could be divided into two groups, the inspiratory muscles and the expiratory muscles. Let's try to find some of them. Here, after removing the forelimb completely, we can, and of course, this is the rest of the pectoral muscles, the pectoral muscle. In this region here, I hope it's clear, there is a small muscle here, the tendon of this muscle is continued with the tendon of the rectus abdominis muscle. This muscle called the rectus thoracis muscle. The rectus thoracis muscle originates from the tendon of the rectus abdominis and inserts to the first rib. The rectus thoracis, contraction of this muscle will move the rib here away from the body, so increasing the, uh, the volume inside the thorax, so that means this is one of the inspiratory muscles. Here, let's move to the next muscle. In this case, just you know, to mention that this is the rest of the uh, uh, serratus ventralis muscle, serratus ventralis or ventral serratus muscle, with two parts, the thoracic and the cervical, which we mentioned in some previous videos. If we dissect it and put it to the side here, we can see this big muscle here. This is what's called the cranial part of the dorsal serratus muscle. So this is the cranial part of the dorsal serratus muscle. So as you can see, the dorsal uh, serratus muscle, cranial part here, originates from the median rough here and inserts to the lateral surfaces of the ribs. That means contraction of this muscle will move the ribs away from the body, increasing the volume of the thorax cavity and helping us with the inspiration. That means this is also one of the inspiratory muscles. Here we talked about the cranial part of the uh, dorsal serrat serratus muscle. That means there is a caudal part. If you go caudally here, you can find these three panels of muscles here called the caudal part of the dorsal serratus muscle. If you look exactly, this muscle originates from the thoracolumbar fascia and inserts to the caudal surface of this ribs. So contract uh, contracting of this muscle will move the ribs toward the body and, of course, um, that means decreasing the volume inside the thorax cavity. That means uh, they are actually expiratory muscles. As we are here in this area, I will show you another muscle extends between the thoracolumbar fascia and the last rib. This is what's called the retractor costa. The retractor costa, from the origin and insertion, we can understand that the contraction of this muscle moves the last rib toward the body toward the body like this, in decreasing the volume of the thorax. That means this is also one of the expiratory muscles. Here, as you can see, between the ribs, between the ribs, there are also muscles. Uh, according to the location, we will name them as intercostal muscles. We have actually two of them. If we dissect, you know, the external one, which we can see between the muscles called the external intercostal muscle. If you look exactly at the muscle fibers of this muscle, you will find that the direction is craniodorsally. It extends from the caudal area of this rib to the cranial surface of this rib here. This one here is one of the, I mean, of course, everywhere, huh? this is inspiratory muscles, the external intercostal muscle. 
Once we say external, that means there are there is internal. In this case, you have to work very carefully and cut, you know, the thin external intercostal muscle, and after that, move it to the side like this, there, and here you can find another muscle extends between the two ribs. This is the internal intercostal muscle. The internal intercostal muscle is expiratory muscle. If you look at the muscle fiber of this muscle, you will find that they are uh, directed cranioventrally. Again, this one was craniodorsally, craniodorsally, the external, and the internal is cranioventrally. The external intercostal uh, muscle is inspiratory muscle, while the internal intercostal muscle is expiratory muscle. Of course, the, this is some of the expiratory and inspiratory muscles. Uh, we we, we uh, should not forget that the main inspiratory muscle is actually the diaphragm which is located inside the body here separate the thorax cavity from the abdominal cavity this is the main inspiratory muscle we will look at it later here um, in addition to the respiratory muscles we have also some other muscles which could help us with the uh, inspiration and expiration a good example is the scalenus muscle here for example if you look at the scalenus muscle which has two parts in the dog the dorsal scalenus muscle and this is here the middle scalenus muscle. In other animals, we have in the horse, for example, the middle and the ventral scalenus muscle. In the ox, we have the dorsal, middle, and ventral scalenus muscle. In the dog, we have just the dorsal and the middle. The dorsal, as you can see here, extends between the ribs, lateral surface, and the transverse process of the cervical vertebra. The same for the uh, middle scalenus muscle extends between the first rib to the transverse process of the cervical vertebra. Contraction of this muscle will move the ribs away from the body. That means increasing the volume also of the thorax cavity, and that means helping us with the inspiration. Uh, so it, it, it's uh, uh, inspirator, I mean, uh, it helped us also with the inspiration. Of course, here in this case, we need also to mention the abdominal muscles, which will also affect the respiratory uh, function uh, and uh, some other muscles.